Okay, good morning, everybody, um, or afternoon, depending on where you're at. Welcome to Kativ Virtual Academy, and thanks for joining us on YouTube as well. My name is Christina Ung. I'm with the marketing team. Um, I help facilitate these sessions, and today we have Marco with us. Thanks for joining us, Marco. Uh, he's going to be talking about five tips for building assemblies in Fusion 360. Um, before we get started, I wanted to share some of our resources that we have on this page that I just dropped in the chat. We have a few newer resources as well, data management, video courses, eBooks, lots of information for you to check out. If this is your first Kati Virtual Academy, welcome. We're so excited that you're here. And we'd love for you to check out other resources that we offer as well. Um, we also have upcoming in-person and virtual events coming up. Um, our next one is going to take place in-person one is going to be on in April in San Jose. You can scan this QR code with your phone. Um, I can also find the link to drop in the chat as well. And these are opportunities for business leaders and technical leaders to discuss uh, current challenges in the industry and in the market. So join us. This is a happy hour style event. Um, there's a few in person, but we also have some virtual. So if you're not in the San Jose area, you could still join us. And lastly, please fill out the survey at the end of the session so that you, you can give us feedback. You can let us know what topics you'd like to see covered. We're always taking feedback and we want to make this program better. So I'll go ahead and let Marco take it away. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Okay. Thank you for the quick little introduction. So let me just go back to the title screen really quick. So just a little bit of what we're going to be covering today. It's going to be five topics for building Fusion 360 assemblies and that leverage the tools built into 360 for collaborative collaboration. Um, my name is Marco Trinidad. I'm one of the application engineers here at Katib and I'm on the support team. So just a little bit of the agenda today. So each one of these topics kind of builds on each other. So we're going to kind of start with kind of a more broader entry level topic. So team management, we're going to go into team avatars and reservations internal and external components, assembly context, and reference objects. So with each one of these, they're each going to build on each other. So I do, so I'm going to switch between my slide and the application itself and I'm working on another computer as well, just to kind of show some of those collaboration tools and how you could use it with um, other team members. So just a quick introduction about myself. My name is Marco Trinidad. Application engineer here at Katib. I've been here for about two and a half years now. Um, I graduated from San Jose State University here in the Bay Area, as you can kind of see on my wallpaper. Um, I'm here in the Bay Area, and I've been on the support team. One of the I am one of the inventor instructors as well, and I've also taught Fusion and support all of the Autodesk products, um, mostly around the manufacturing. And a little bit outside, if you've maybe seen some of my other KVAs, um, really big into photography, and you might have seen some of the parts in some of my previous uh, KVAs. All right, so just getting started here. So a little bit about kind of Fusion. It is a collaboration cloud tool. So on top of being a CAD tool, it also has a little bit of team management built into it. Um, so you can share your files, work on files with other team members using the cloud management and the team resources. So I'm going to share that inside of the application. But here you can kind of take a quick look. Um, with Fusion, it, you do have a team associated with your account. And then within that team, you can have different projects. So you can invite different project members. You can see on the file that I'm going to be using today. I had I was the one that built the team and then Andy helped me out with creating some of these files and you can see sort of how the management side of the application works. And then inside of the data panel here on the left, this little left screenshot is how it looks in the application and how you can see some of those details for the file. So let me jump into Fusion really quick. So here you can see my data sample for today. Um, I have this little Game Boy that I created with Andy, and we worked on it together. I created kind of this shell to start out with, and then he built on that to create some of these um, external buttons and some of the screen components in here. Um, not quite complete yet, but so 
just to start out, if we have our project here, this is my team up at the top left. And then within that team, I created this project that we created the Game Boy inside of. So in here, under the data man or the data panel, I can switch over to people and then I can start inviting my users. So I invited Andy in, Maddie, my own personal account, um, which I'm using today. And you can quickly just invite new users just with a simple email. It'll send out an email to them that they've been invited into a, a new project. Uh, for a project, they don't need to accept it. Although if you're inviting them to a team, they do need to accept the invitation in order to be able to um, see the team on their dropdown. So you can see here, I'm part of a few teams. So if you do wanna invite new users, I'm gonna click on this little globe icon. And what that's gonna do is gonna bring me over to the um, Fusion Teams management page on the uh, Teams portal. So you can see here, now I'm inside of the team and in inside of here, I can see my project members as well. But in here, I have a little bit more control over what I can do. I can switch project members from editors to viewers. I can remove them from the project if they're um, no longer contributors. And then I can open up files within here and preview them. Inside of here, you can also send out um, links to files for a view, um, a view experience. So if you want external users um, outside of your project to view them, you can send the link here. So it's this top little right icon. Now, if I did wanna invite someone into my team, the larger level team that I have here with all these projects, I'd go up to the top right under admin and then over to members and roles. So in here, I can add them to the team where they can see all of my projects. This is probably more of a company-wide um, location for files where each individual project itself that you have, you can maybe um, create a separate project for, and then you can even separate out um, who has access to which projects. So you can see here, I have my team members, pending invitations, sent invitations. Now, when they do get invited to the team itself, they do need to accept it, because like I said, otherwise they aren't gonna be able to see it um, within their dropdown. I do see a hand raised. Um, are we able to see that in the chat or have them speak? If you have any questions, feel free to drop in the chat or um, in the Q and A, um, and then I can see I can see it within those two. And if I don't see it right away, Christina can also let me know. So that is kind of a top level um, inviting different users into your Fusion team. Now, let me go back to my PowerPoint slide. Oh, and let me show you where this information here is on the data panel. So on the data panel, we do have um, a revision check. Let me quickly activate my tool here. So we do have this little revision here. So that kind of indicates what version of the file it's on. So Andy created this file here. And if I click on that little revision, I can see the history. So you can see Andy's the one that kind of made the changes so far. I haven't done anything on it. I can see that in here. I can actually even bring up some of these um, older versions if I need to. And then I can see where they're used. In this case, um, nothing's used inside of it, but this is being used on the top level Game Boy Assembly. And then I can see if there is a drawing associated with it. Okay, so that is where we can see the revisions. Let me jump back in and automatically these revisions are created whenever you make a change to the file. If you made an explicit save, so if I purposely go up here and save it manually, it'll also give me an option to give it a name for a save. Now let me go back into the presentation. So the next tip is sort of kind of built into Fusion itself. It's these little avatars that are built into the files whenever they're open. So you can see that whenever someone has a file open, it'll show up with this little icon right here. And whenever they actually make a change to the file, so you can see there's this little white dot, that means somebody has actually reserved the file itself. So they didn't 
have to do anything. Um, they didn't have to do an explicit checkout per se in order to get to that. So if I go back into my file itself, I can see that right now I have this file open. This is actually my second account right here. And then you can see that it's sort of hard to tell, but this one's a little bit more purple. But in both the cases, I do have the Game Boy checked out, or opened up. Now, if you see the little dot here, so if I switch over to my other computer really quick, if I were to make a change on it, so now I've on my other computer, I actually made a change on this button. You can see that now this file is reserved by my other account. Um, that means that this account that I have open on my screen isn't allowed to make any changes to that file. And that happens on its own without me having to go in and check out anything. The program itself picks up that I have made a change, so it's um, reserved it to me. Now, if you do want to check it out or do you want to turn off that option, you can actually do that inside of the team settings. So once again, this will be under your admin, under team settings. At the very bottom, there is this design reservation. Um, if you turn this off, it won't explicitly check out things whenever changes are made. Um, they'll just populate after save. So you'll save your file, and then it'll create those changes, and then they'll transfer over to the um, anywhere that it's being used. So this is sort of a built-in check-in, check-out uh, way of working within Fusion. So moving on to our next part, or next topic. So internal and external components. So you could see inside of Fusion, there are some of these linked files. So that means those files were actually created outside of the context of the assembly that I'm working on, and they're linked back. So they exist within their own separate files um, themselves. And within Fusion, you can do an edit in place. And with an edit in place, you can um, either choose to have an associative um, reference with some of the other files, or you can um, choose to not have any of those references. So you can see in here, um, there's this little option right here that shows up associative and non associative. So that'll let you um, kind of take in some of those references from the files that you're opening up. So switching back to Fusion. So in this case, you can see I built up this assembly itself. The only two components that I actually built within this assembly were these two um, shell halves. So my part A and my part B, those were the only two things that I built in here. The rest of these were actually built outside of the context of these uh, this assembly. So you could see on this model tree, all these files right here, these are all link components. So that means that they exist in their own separate files. So I can open these separately outside of this assembly. Um, and this is where they exist. I guess this is, if it were a file and inventor, it'd be their own separate part files as opposed to existing inside of it, a single assembly file. Now you do have the option to create um, internal or external when you create a new component. So in this case, you could see I have my assembly and let's say I wanna create a new file, a new part within here. I can right click my assembly, create a new component, and then this window pops up. So this lets me know, do I want it to be internal and have it only exist inside of this assembly or do I want it to be external? Now, if Thinking ahead of how I want to design this, if I want someone else to work on this, I would probably want this to be external so that they have the option to check in or check it out, um, work on it and make changes on it separately or internal if I only want this file to exist inside of this assembly. So I'm going to click on external and then you'll see my new external component is inside of here. So if I create I'm just going to create uh, some simple geometry here so that the icon shows up when I save. So let's create that. Click OK. Extrude this. Say one inch. 
I just want this. So you can see here, I've created some geometry now. And now let's say I'm okay with that. I have something quick that I shouldn't oh, finish my edit in place. So now I have that unsaved. Now when I save this, you can see that that external one is going to be saved. And then you'll see that file populate itself. So now in this case, now I have this separate component. If I do want to make changes to it separately, I can open this in its own file. And then I can check it out here, or I can have it reserved in this case and work on it individually without having to work on the um, top level itself. Let me close this one out, close that one out, and I can remove this one. I don't think I need this inside of here. So that is how you can use internal and external components. Uh, the edit in place is um, similar to an edit in place in Inventor. Um, only difference really is um, some of the files you may be editing internally and then some of them externally. So like in this case, if I want to do an edit on an internal component, it act just activates. It doesn't um, pop up the same option as an edit in place. All right. Next up, assembly context. So with an external component, you can have um, references to internal components. So if you're building a, let's say the button on our assembly that we have, I can link it back to the shell so that way I can reference that geometry. And then what ends up happening is that in uh, Fusion adds these little context um, icons or context um references so these are different contexts for files that i'm using within the part itself so i can show the relationship between the top and the top level assembly or those top other components that i'm working on and the one that i uh the external one that i'm using so you can see that within here so let me go back inside of my assembly in here and let's say I wanted to edit this. Let's say I wanted to edit something new. So I'm going to edit this button. And I'm going to make this one associative. It is turned on by default. So I just wanted to make sure that is in there. And then now if I were to create, let's say, a sketch on here. And I grab some of the geometry from this shell. So anytime I reference geometry that is not inside of this part, let me go down here. You can see that I'll have an assembly context. And within that context, it'll pop up what I am using. So in this case, I am using the body from this shell that I created. And it'll show up as a context inside of here. So this really helps when you're linking files. Um, and now when I go back into edit this little button, um, I don't have to be inside of this assembly. It'll actually have this context already within here. I just need to make sure that when I finish, I save that back. So I'm going to save that. Move that over here. Save that. And then now with inside of the button itself, I'll have that context. So let me go open up this button. Um, let's see, open. You can see I have the context in here. And let me activate this one really quick. I have that context. I can work on it independently. I don't need to have my full assembly reserved now. I can just work on this button on its own. Um, and maybe build on it. So maybe I want these two buttons to be a single part. I can now create that, use the same geometry that I have here and not have to be inside of my top level. 
So now if I were to edit, make a change in here, so let's say I just make a really quick change. So let's say I just want a little knob on here. Oh, it's right there. Okay, and extrude that. Let's extrude just that 0.01. So now that I'm done editing, if I go back to my top level, it should come up that I am out of sync. I don't think it'll do it in this case because I actually have both files open. Let me try doing a save. So now whenever I do make changes individually, it should pop up out of sync. You'll see this little icon um, because both of these buttons are the same. You can see that it's saying one reference is out of date. Now, in order to fix that, you can just do a get latest version. It'll grab that latest version that I created and it'll um, place it inside of here. So let me turn off these sketches. And now you can see I have that update changed. Now, the last topic or last quick tip that I wanted to cover is reference objects. So reference objects are similar to a derive if you've used the derive tool where you can use those um, references just similar to how we already did, but you can include them all um, without having to create any reference geometry. So you, in our previous example, I created that projected sketch in order to include them. In this case, I can just include all of those before I even start creating any geometry for the part. That way I can maybe hand off that part to someone else to create some components and not have them um, link back to the top level. So let's go back in here. So let's create a brand new component on our top level assembly. This one will be external, and then this one I'll name just buttons. Create that. So now you can see I'm in the edit in place since this is an external component. It is associative. That is how it is set up by default. And then let's say I wanted to hand this off to one of my other team members and I want them to build, rebuild some of these buttons. So let's say these two buttons, you can see we're using the same one in this case, so our A and B button. Let's say I wanted to hand it off to them and said, Let, let's make this part just a single part where they're connected. Um, in order for them to create that, they're going to need the shell. So I can go to reference objects. This window will look pretty familiar. You can um, grab in references. You, they can be components. You can see I can drop this down and I have bodies. They can actually even be work features. If you have work features, you can include them. In this case, I only need this front shell. Click OK. Finish my edit in place. Now I do need to save this component um, in order for it to get created. I'm just going to do a user save in here. And then now I have my buttons. So let's go ahead and open that up. And now inside of here, I can hand, hand this off to, let's say, Maddie or Andy and activate my associative or my assembly context with my reference files. Um, if I needed more, I can add them in here. And now she can start detailing and working on this part. Um, if I hand this over to Maddie, she can start working on this um, without having to be inside of the top level assembly. Maybe you don't want everyone to be in the assembly um, all at the same time. It might be a little too confusing or might be too many hands um, working on the same thing. So you can see now I can start to slowly create um, and I can bring in those references. Click OK. So now I can start to build up my new part. Let's bring that out, click OK. You can see now I'm slowly starting to build, oops. Bring it back. And without having to be in the assembly, now I can uh, create this, this um, 
two button layout and I can add the letters onto it. Now I have my A button and my B button and they don't have to be separated out. They can just be an individual component. Now, when I save this, it should pop up right back into my assembly. Yep, I just need to get the latest version. And then we'll get the latest version. And then you can see it pop up in here. Now I will just have to uh, create my joints in so that way I can place it where I want to. But you can see I was able to work on that file without having to reserve this whole assembly. So that way others can continue to work on it. And then um, I can work on my own individual parts. Okay, so that covers our five tips for today. So just a little bit of a recap. We covered the team management um, aspect and working with inside of the um, browser portal. We worked on the team avatars and the reservations, internal and external components, using assembly contexts and reference objects to be able to work on files independently from each other without having to work on the top level and checking everything out. Um, for other, where others wouldn't be able to use them. So let me go right here. So here's just a little bit of our support resources. I'm not sure, Christina, if you have anything else to add um, for finishing up. I do not. I, sorry, let me put my video on. I did drop those resources in the chat for everyone though. Um, so you can check them out, kativ.com slash resources for more information. Thank you so much for leading the session, Marco. If anyone has questions after, you can email us at uh, supportactive.com or you can give us a call. Thank you so much for joining everyone. We will see you at next week's session. All right. Thank you, everyone.